Greetings and welcome, my name is Aaron Craig with Beyond This Games, and what we're going to look at today is two-dimensional arrays. And the best way to get started is to be able to visualize that. So we know that one-dimensional arrays already look like this. They are boxes in a line, whether that be a vertical line or horizontal. They have indexes and they have values inside of them. And a two-dimensional array is kind of the same thing, except now you've got them going horizontally and vertically. And the indexes start at zero on both ends and just keep going until the end of the length. And the lengths are not necessarily related. So that means that you could have a horizontal length over here of just three. And then you could have a vertical length, so the number of entries altogether could be 25. Those two things are not related at all. You can have one be long, one be short, they can be exactly the same, it doesn't matter. Now to access them, the ordering is important. You go A, which is the, the vertical first, and then you go B, which is the horizontal. So to access Jill here, you can see it'd be three, two. So where those meet up, that's what that would be. Now that's one way to hold values like that, and it works really well. Now what I usually end up doing is using a 2D array to hold information that is related together, just like you can see right here. So this could be like the X and Y position or their health and their stamina. Then you have ID and you can see their speed right here. You can hold different values in every single box and you just relate one string, one line of boxes to something. Now what I mean by that is using it like this. So if we had an item list and we were to make a 2D array, it's very similar to a 1D array. It's just you put an entry in, you put a comma, and then you put another one in there. So we could say this is a potion. So this would be the name of the item. And then an item list 01, we would do S, we could actually put the sprite in here. So if we had a sprite, we could actually put that in there. And then when we want to iterate, go through this 2D array, we can actually draw that sprite directly to the screen. And you can go on and on. So if we just had those two things to make a new item, you would increase this first entry by one and start back at zero. And I normally add a little bit of space in between these. So this would be item one, this would be item two, and so on and so forth. Uh, here's a button. So that is a 2D array kind of in a nutshell. You've got that right there. Now 2D arrays become a little more complex because when you want to go through them, called iterating, that means you're going to need two for loops. And that can be very confusing because having a loop inside of a loop, you need to actually be able to see that, kind of like draw it out on a whiteboard to visualize how that's going to work. When displaying an inventory, if you went through like my inventory series, you probably had a lot of difficulty displaying that. At least I did. That was like the toughest part of it. Making an item list is fairly easy. Displaying it gets a lot more difficult. Now, in my own game, and in my dialogue series as well, we used two-dimensional arrays. So this is an example of a two-dimensional array for dialogue. So I have zero, and zero, zero is like the initial thing that he can say. And so up to here, this person is saying three different things back to back, and then when it gets to the third option, I suddenly can say these three different things. And you can see this is two, one, two, three. So these are all options. So when I get to that, I've got a for loop saying, while on option two, display all of the available options, which is one, two, and three, because zero is already taken right here. And so that is a for loop going through and it's checking to see where I'm at and how long each of those are. Now, there are some pretty important functions once you start working with 2D arrays. So let's take a look at those. There's only a few, but you're gonna want these ones down here. Now, I haven't covered these first ones because I don't really use these at all. 
Now you can, and if you want to copy an array, then I would definitely recommend this. Uh, they have things for checking if it's an array and creating one, which if you want to be like super proper and make sure that you're always doing things properly, you should always check if something is an array and then say, if it's not, then make the array and fill it up. But that's kind of like hyper protective coding and GameMaker Studio is already super relaxed with their language, so you'll probably be okay if you don't do that. Now we have used array length 1D. Now the next two that we're gonna look at are array length 2D and array height 2D. So you can look at those and get a little confused because there's a length and a height, and it's not always clear which one is which. In this example, you've got height being A and length being B. Now, when I'm doing it, I'm actually creating it the opposite direction. I say 00, zero is the name, zero, 01 is the potion, so it looks more like the name is here, and then you've got the sprite right here, so it's going from left to right, not up to down. And that is just a pure personal preference. To me, it's much easier to read if I have everything in zero instead of everything in uh, like 1, 2, and those, those are all zeros. You can do it however you want. Now, the important thing is that when this happens, you need to make sure you're using the right function to check that. So I'm gonna say show message, and we're gonna first do array length 2D. And when you're doing 2D, you actually have to pass in two options. And those two options are the array index and the entry of the array to get the length of. So what that means is that we are actually checking the length of one, and we need to know exactly which one in the height we are checking. So we're gonna pass in item list and we're gonna check the very first one. So if we run this, it should give us a value of two. Except of course, if you're storing something that doesn't exist. So let's put something in here just for now. We don't actually have that sprite, but if we did, if that was a valid sprite in your game, then it would work perfectly fine. So there's our value of two. And if we put in one here, uh, let's close that. If we put one in here, obviously we will get one. So that gives you the idea of how that works. And then you've got the height. So if we have array height 2D, we don't need this second value. We're just passing in item list. And if we do that, it will give us a value of two as well, since we have zero, one, which is two overall. So 2D arrays are great, and we are gonna be looking at these a little more in depth once we actually get to grids, because a grid is actually a 2D array with just a whole bunch of built-in functionality, which it actually says right here. So when you make a 2D array, there's actually nothing you can do besides manually altering and changing values inside of here. And sometimes that's just fine. For my master inventory list, I could use just a 2D array and store all the items in my game just like this, and that would be fine. And then when I need to iterate over them, I use two for loops, work out the bugs, and I'm done. But for more complex things, 2D arrays you're gonna to want to have some built-in functionality like it has right here. All of these functions are just about 2D arrays, and they have a lot of functionality, things that you might not be able to do very easily on your own. But the important thing is that you could. For every single one of these functions that you see here, you can make a script yourself or an alarm or a user event inside of an object and do and replicate that functionality. If we wanted to create and destroy, that's pretty easily. Getting the width and the height, we already know how to do that. If we wanted to clear everything, well, we could do two for loops and iterate over this entire thing, setting it all to zero. That would be fine. If we wanted to get the sum of a row, well, that's a little more difficult. If we wanted to get a sum of like this, these four right here, that would be much more difficult, but you could. A 2D array, a grid, same core concept. The grid just has a bunch of added functionality. So 2D arrays are great. 
I use them actually all the time. I use grids as well when I need more functionality. But if you just need to hold some data like this, there's nothing wrong with creating a 2D array just like this and just iterating over that. Now to show you an example of iteration, let's go ahead and make a few more things inside of here. So I'm going to say item list one one equals SPR button. Item list one two equals uh, damage. Let's say you throw the button at someone. So we just have a couple more things inside of here. This one's a little bit longer to show you that when you use the array functions, array height and length 2D, it doesn't matter if these are different. It's okay. So let's go inside of the draw event and we're gonna comment this out. And instead, we're gonna do four loops again. So we're gonna say for i is equal to zero, i is less than array height 2D. Because of the way we've set it up, we are going from zero to one, and each index in this first spot is an item. So we want to draw all the items. So we're going to use height first. So item list, and we're going to increase i. Now, a very important part of doing loops inside of each other, especially for loops, is that they can't have the same variable that you initialize and that you're checking here. So when we make a new one, I do j is equal to zero. And that doesn't matter. You could use z, doesn't matter at all. We just need a different variable inside of there. So we're gonna say while z is less than array length 2d, and inside of here we're gonna pass an item list and then we're gonna put in i. And we're gonna say plus plus z. So hopefully you have a good understanding of for loops because we went through that and hopefully that makes sense. Forgot a parenthesis here. Which means that i is going to increase by one each time it, it goes through uh, whatever code is inside of here. Now inside of the first for loop is another loop, which means that the entire second for loop must finish before i continues onward. So that means that i is going to equal zero right here for as long as we are going through the length of the first index while it's zero, second index while it's one, so on and so forth. So coming inside of this double for loop, what we're gonna do is use a couple of if statements along with the drawing of the text and the sprite. So we're gonna say if z doesn't equal one, we're gonna draw text. Now the reason that we're doing z doesn't equal one is because the one index is going to be the sprites that we're actually drawing. So everything else right now is text, so we want to portion that correctly. We don't want to actually draw, we don't want to draw the text of sprite zero, we only want to draw the sprite. So we're going to say if it doesn't equal one, then we're drawing text. Otherwise, if z is equal to one, so you could have just an else statement here, or you can be specific if you're gonna have more things you're drawing besides these three. Then we would draw a sprite. So let's take care of this draw text first. So we're gonna say 500, but this time we actually need to increase 500 because we want to draw the description and the damage and whatever else we're gonna put with the item to the right of that. So we're gonna say plus, and we need to put Z inside of here because Z is gonna be the one that's actually changing while we are looking at the item. I is going to remain the same, whether that be zero, one, two, or 20. It's not going to change until this entire for loop has been gone through, which means that this whole thing will be drawn and we don't want this value to stay the same when we are increasing it. So we're gonna say plus Z times 50. Then the Y value is going to be 200 plus, and now we need to increase it by i, because i is for each item, and we want the items to be on different rows. So we're gonna say times 200, and then we, the string is the same as usual, so we're gonna draw the item list, and this time it's gonna be i, because the i stands for item, basically, and the z is for the index that we're in, so we're gonna say z for that index, okay? Hopefully that makes sense, and I know there's a little bit of math in here. Like, it's not much math, it's just adding a few numbers together. The difficult part is knowing which 
number to add. Think of the first for loop as the first index on this side. The second for loop is the second index over here. And right now, each item is this index on the left. So we're gonna draw the sprite. And we're gonna draw the sprite first, so it's item list iz. And then it's going to be sub image of zero. And the x position is gonna be 400. So that is less than the text. So we're actually gonna put the picture on the left hand side. If we wanted the picture to be on the right hand side, there'd be a little more math you have to do, probably a few more if statements as well, because you would need to calculate exactly where the sprite is gonna be and then place the text on the right hand side of that. Certainly can still do it, but a little more effort. So we're just gonna put the image on the left. And the Y position is gonna move this exact same thing here. So you can actually copy this because we want the Y position to not change where it's going at all. So if we press F5 and run that, now we're gonna have a list of items that show up right here. Now there's a lot of space in between. That is something you can change just by doing a little less of the 200 plus, what is that, times 100 that we've got there, times 200. Yeah, so you can decrease that. That's personal preference, the size of your menu, whatever it's gonna be. But that's drawing a 2D array, kind of a item list that you've got there, and you can see that you can have as much as you want. It doesn't matter what's in there as long as you account for it in the if statements. And these sizes don't have to match either because we're using the functions length and height 2D, so it's always getting the correct value every time. So hopefully that helps, that gives you an example. I'll put this code up as well if you'd like to download it and play with it. Uh, just remember the FPS is set to one, so it's very slow if you're trying to do anything. If you have any questions, do give me a shout out, let me know, I'll do my best to answer them. If you wanna see more about 2D arrays, then just let me know, I can do some more examples. But in the next couple of videos, we're gonna be looking at functionality like grids that are basically 2D arrays that let us do even more stuff with them. So I hope that helps. I hope you enjoyed it. That's all I've got for you today. As always, have fun making great games, and I'll talk to you later.